front page for Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. Thanks for joining us. I'm George Gerbo. Russia and Ukraine have agreed to a second round of peace talks, even as Russian troops stepped up their assault of key Ukrainian cities Kharkiv and Kherson and neared the capital of Kyiv. Ben Wolfgang and Bill Gertz report officials from the two countries are expected to meet Thursday, though the exact details and parameters of those talks are unclear. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky remains defiant, saying his country will never surrender as the brutal war enters its second week. Russian officials signaled they'd take a hard line in negotiations. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov again falsely accused the West of sparking the conflict by rejecting a host of Kremlin demands. In the face of a mounting wall of global disapproval and a tougher-than-expected fight on the ground, Russian President Vladimir Putin has showed little willingness to back off his unprovoked assault. His veiled threats to use his nuclear arsenal if the West comes to Ukraine's aid highlight a new military doctrine called Escalate to De-Escalate. U.S. officials have expressed concern that the doctrine opens a pathway for using low-yield nuclear strikes in conflicts when a nation's conventional forces are stymied. It appears that's taking place for Russia just over a week into its military operation in Ukraine. The human toll of Russia's actions is also starting to come into focus. Over the past week, hundreds of thousands of Ukrainians have faced heartbreaking decisions of whether to leave their homes and family members. Joseph Clark reports from Poland, where the Russian invasion has created what some fear will be the most expansive mass migration in Europe in decades. More than 830,000 people, primarily women and children, have fled to bordering countries since Russia began its assault, according to United Nations figures released this week. Poland alone has taken in more than half of those fleeing the war along its 330-mile border with Ukraine, and Polish authorities estimate that 50,000 more refugees are arriving every day. A reminder that you can find all these stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page. If you don't have access to the Times yet, you can visit WashingtonTimes.com slash George for a special subscription offer. And a quick reminder that the front page will be off next week, March 7th through March 11th, and will return on Monday, March 14th. Bipartisan pressure is building on President Biden to grant new humanitarian protections to allow Ukrainians in the United States to remain and work here legally under the Temporary Protected Status Program. Created by Congress in 1990, Stephen Dynan reports temporary protected status can be granted to people from countries strained by natural disasters, pandemics, political upheaval, or war. The goal is to offer citizens a short-term haven and give the countries a chance to recover without an influx of citizens straining services. It applies to people in the United States legally and illegally. In the case of the approximately 30,000 or so Ukrainians that could be eligible, most are estimated to have legal status with student or temporary work visas. And finally, a Republican-hired special counsel claims that Wisconsin officials ditched legal requirements for supervising nursing home ballots during the pandemic. Susan Fericchio reports investigator Michael Gableman's interim report claims there is fraud because of high turnout rates among 91 nursing homes in five Wisconsin counties. The report blames the irregularities on the bipartisan Wisconsin Elections Commission. The report was condemned by Badger State officials from both parties. The leader of the Republican-led state assembly, Jim Steinecke, tweeted that it was a fool's errand, and Wisconsin Democratic Governor Tony Evers called the report an embarrassment for our state and a colossal waste of taxpayer dollars. Find all of today's front page stories at WashingtonTimes.com slash front page or on the Washington Times app. And find us on any major podcast platform. Just search Washington Times in your favorite podcast app. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at Wash Times for breaking news, sports, commentary, and more. For the Washington Times, I'm George Gerbo. Thank you.